tell us, you know, it's, it's that time of the year. People are starting to think about, should I, should I get a kayak? A lot of guys are ask, you know, I'm looking at it, but I don't necessarily know. And always the first question comes out, sit in, sit on top. Let's start there. Yeah, see, you're from Boston. That's right. So that's a dilemma up there. Yeah. But when you're south of the Mason-Dixon, there is no dilemma. There is no dilemma. It's all sit on top, because we can get wet. Because it's always hot. It's always hot down here. Man. No. So, for, for real. Well, that's true. But yeah. don't you have those moments, too, though, where, where it does drop, and you're like, really? I wish I... We, it's never issue. Oh, you... Okay. I, if you fish down here, you'll never see a sitting side. Really? Never. Not once. Well, and, and that's and that's why because sit, the sit on top is so much more versatile. Right. You can put gear on it. You can put a scuba tank and dive off of it. I mean, you can pack so much more stuff, and they also don't sink. Right. So if you have the option, if you're not going to get wet, you're not going to get cold. Right. Everybody rolls with sit on tops. Up there where it does get cold, I mean, you got to decide. Yeah, exactly. But, but either way, you're still going to deal with the elements up north. Either way, I, I, I think the biggest question is, what if I capsize? I'm new to this, you know, oh. and I hear it's a lot of training to, to learn how to rotate the yak back on top. Is is that a big consideration for most, or should that be a consideration? How comfortable are you with that thought? With the sit in, with the sit in sides, right. they're, they're more tippy. Yeah. So capsizing with the sit on top, the sit on top's much wider. Okay. So it's not as big an issue, um, but you, you do need to play with it. But here we're always swimming and jumping in and out of the water and surfing and you know. So you basically you're saying, for for the person who might be concerned about capsizing, or not worried about the elements so much, a sit on top is probably the right way to go in general. Yeah, I, I think a sit on top yak is the way to go, whether I'm up north or down south. Either way, it's it's a more versatile boat. Um, it's just it carries a lot more gear. It's easy to deal with since you, everything's wide open. It will not sink, you know? Right. So even if you do flip out of it and you're in the middle of Lake Erie or something, you know, yeah, you still can yeah, wait for your right. potting to come in the boat that's and come right. get you. That's right. It's not going to fool Been there. In the bottom. That's yeah. right. Been there. So you're going to do some 101 tomorrow. What are some of the other talking points that you're going to be kind of presenting to folks who are trying to learn about? Yeah, um, just about getting into the sport. Um, how, how economical the sport is, how easy it is, and everybody, everything from little kid, 12-year-old kids on up. I've got doctors in L.A. in their garage rigging their yak up, and it's just as excited as a 12-year-old kid mowing grass in Florida getting his <laughs> yak rigged up, you know, his first That's one, right. you know. That's right. Yeah. But are, you're seeing, I bet you're seeing an increase in interest, especially now with the economy. People are kind of looking for things to do close to home or outside adventure, so kayaking seems to have increased greatly in the last three five, six years. Actually. Yeah, man. It, it really fits that bill. Uh, the more Priuses I see, the more kayaks I see. <laughs> you know? <laughs> you know? And the more guys right. that are trading their truck in for a Kia, the more kayaks. That's you know? right. Exactly. So you're going to go over all the kind of, you know, sit on top, sit in. What, what are some of the other considerations when you're looking at a yak, especially you start talking about gear? What do you want to think about when you're like, okay, I got, I got my rods, I got, you know, two tackle boxes. Keep it simple. When you're getting into the sport, there's no reason to spend a truckload of money. It's a cheap sport. That's why I love it so much, you know? Right. Get on Craigslist. Do not be afraid of used yaks. I had two 15, 18-year-old ocean kayaks that, I mean, the day I sold them, they were catching as many fish as the day I bought them. And no they problems, were, right? I mean, they're scratched up and sun faded, but they're still cooking. Save know? that money. Yeah, That's there's right. no reason to spend a lot. Hit Craigslist, uh, hit some local forums, spend 300 bucks on an old used yak because everybody because they're cheap everybody's constantly upgrading right. so so yeah. actually w when you're looking at that though do you want to take into anything into consideration like if you see scratches what should you look for in terms of like how heavy or how deep those scratches are how it's never been an issue never been an even issue. down here where we have oysters and we yep. have what they call oyster yeah. rash where it breaks that's right it still doesn't penetrate deep enough to really worry about it so Excellent. I mean, I say as long as it don't have a big old crack in it, yeah, right. which I don't even see a lot. That's right. Um, get that sucker, and okay. you know, fix it up. Get you a milk crate. Get you some PVC. You spend a day at Lowe's. Get you some uh, zip ties, and go to town and rig it up how you want. Exactly. You exactly. So what? What other considerations? Um, you gotta have a PFD. All the states, you know, want you to have a PFD. Um, right. it, you really should wear it. If you don't wear it, it should be. 
easily accessible behind you, on your seat or underneath underneath your seat. Um, rods, you know, getting your rods rigged up, getting your milk crate rigged up. Mm -hmm. You want your milk crate with your PVC. If you want to troll, put some out at a 90 degree angle. Uh, you want some sticking straight up for you just holding your rods. Just to have it, yeah, that's yeah. right. right. Um, you know, the fish grip who I'm involved with is, is a must for all yak fishermen. Yeah. It's light, it's, um, it's, man, it holds a ton of weight. Damn, what? That's what I'm talking there about right go. there. This is a kayak fisherman's dream machine right here. That is uh, sweet, too. Yeah, they, yeah, I got those moments where you're trying to reach over, your hands are wet, you're trying to, this, it does the job. It's a nice, it's a really nice grip. Yeah, man, we, we clip on to trees, clip on to buoys. Um, we, we clip our rods all together with these when we're coming into the surf. We found a million and one uses for the fish grip. They float, so it just Excellent. solves a lot of problems. Excellent. You know? Excellent. What about also with paddles, too? Considerations around there. Okay. If we're talking about a traditional paddle craft, yeah. once again, this is one-on-one -on -one talk, right? Exactly. We're getting into the sport. Introduction. You want your $300 use yak, you want your milk crate from behind Circle K, and you want your PVC and your zip ties, and you want to go to your local sporting goods store and pick up a $20, $30, $40 $20, relatively light paddle. You know, save the three hundred dollar graphite one for the you know for yep, later. Exactly. You right. know, but I still have some twenty four dollar Academy aluminum paddles that are awesome. There's Mine last one. forever. Yeah. Mine have been forever. You know, and that's what I love about the sport. Any considerations about size? Sometimes you actually look for the bend. Some people like, you know, I, I want one that's got you know the wider the wider pad paddles on him. It doesn't really matter, does it? Not Depending really. Depending on what kind of, where you are and where, what you're out in. Yeah. Right. At the lower price range, right. they're going to all kind of be just standardized. Right. But the biggest thing is whether your your blades are parallel like that or whether they're feathered. Ones like this. Um, the feathering is for when this one's cut through the air, it's cutting, and then this one's digging, and then vice versa. So um, you can get into that later if you. If you go to some kind of a paddle day at your local kayak shop, they'll just have them all flat, and that works great. If it's too windy, you don't want to be in a yak anyway. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So, so let me also ask. So, what's uh, what's going to happen with uh, 30 miles out uh, 2014? Oh man, we got a big year coming, man. So I just ran into Mike Iaconelli over there, and he said he wants to fish with me on the show. I'm gonna hold him to that. So, but we we're we gonna got, see that. We got a lot of things coming. Um, we're doing a bunch more freshwater this year than we've done. Uh, we're talking to some people at Lake Texoma. We're probably going to do some striper. Uh, catfish, I'm fishing with the guys from um, um, the booth over, the Hobie booth over here. Okay. And we're going to be doing some catfishing in the Dallas area. Um, You're going to be in the tank tomorrow, right? Or are you going to be uh, you're, uh, by the, the tank area, actually? Yeah, on the stage. Okay, up on the stage? Yeah, or? I'll have one of their Hobies, and we'll be doing some uh, one on one tomorrow seminar. And then on Sunday, BTB, Beyond the Breakers Offshore. Excellent. Anything else you'd like to say to those looking to learn about uh, yakking or about what uh, maybe they should tune into you and just yeah, find man. out all you Look, need to know? Go to 30milesout.com and watch my show. I have a lot of tips on there. But while you're on 30milesout.com, go to Yak in Texas. I've got a link. That's a talk show. It's how to rig your milk crate, how to rig your yak. That's Kayak Kevin calls in, tells me everything he does. Go to Yak in Texas. It's on YouTube. It's a 80 videos on how to how to start out kayak fishing. That's what we need. Well, I what appreciate you taking a minute. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Yeah, man. Thank you. Thank y'all. All right. Easyangler.com. Get you some. What? <laughs> <laughs> Splash.